Hello, ladies and gentlemen of Biology 400. This is Mr. Gales, and today I'm going to go through the uh, answers to the cell practice quiz with you. If you were in class and you already went through this, this is just a way for you to double check your work, uh, maybe review a little bit of additional information about the structures. If you were not in class, then uh, what you need to do is make sure that you take this practice quiz first. You should have gotten one in class, or if, we, uh, if you emailed one of us, we probably would have sent one back to you. So as the video plays, what I want you to do in just a minute is you're going to pause the video, fill this in as much as you can, and then when you're done, you can play the video so that you can get the answers. Okay? Now what you're going to do on this practice quiz is you have three cells. There's cell A, cell B, and on the back you have cell C. And what you're going to do is first of all label what kind of cell it is, and then as completely as possible label all the various structures that you see here. Now you're looking at a small version of this. On the real quiz, you'll have a large diagram and I, they're in color so that'll help as well. Um, just do your best to try to label as many of these structures as possible. And then on the back side, after you're done labeling plant C or uh, diagram C, there is a series of questions for you to answer. And these questions are just geared towards helping you to, to practice the learning targets for the cell quiz. Okay, so if you haven't done the quiz yet, go ahead and hit pause here. And for the rest of you who have done it, I'm going to grab my key and we're going to go over this real quickly. Okay. This is the, the first cell. And what we're looking at is a eukaryotic plant cell. All right. And we can tell it's a plant cell. A couple of the major clues you can see that it's kind of a boxy shape. It's got the, the cell wall as the outer covering. It's got this large central vacuole, and it's got chloroplasts. Now, chloroplasts would be green on a colored diagram. One way that you can tell that these are chloroplasts is that they're large structures with infolded internal membranes, and those infolded internal membranes look like stacks of coins. That's a, a clear clue that those are chloroplasts. So let's run around the diagram here and take a look at what the uh, structures are. I'm going to start up here with the nucleus in the top. This is a eukaryotic cell because it contains a nucleus. The whole entire large structure itself is the nucleus. The nucleus includes several important uh, parts. The nuclear envelope is the structure that surrounds the nucleus. It is a lipid bilayer, which we can clearly see in that picture there. And the outer covering of that nuclear envelope, there are holes in it, which are called nuclear pores, which allow for the passage of uh, materials into and out of the nucleus. Uh, another structure within the nucleus is the dark dense region here, the central region called the nucleolus. Uh, this is where ribosomes are synthesized. And then one additional thing that you'll need to know about the nucleus is that the thread-like material inside the nucleus is called chromatin. Chromatin is made up of DNA and protein. And when the cell is, is living the majority of its life cycle, the genetic material exists as this chromatin, sort of very fine unwound threads. When the cell is preparing to and going through cell division um, with the nucleus being pulled apart, there are, are distinct chromosomes that we can actually see. So the chromatin essentially condenses into these visible structures. Okay, uh, just outside the nucleus, going clockwise here, we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's rough because it's dotted with ribosomes. It's a little bit difficult probably for you to tell on this uh, monitor here. But there are the, the, the membranes, so the back and forth meandering membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes on it. So that's rough ER. Next to it is smooth ER. It's, again, a membrane-like structure, sort of tube-looking, and it lacks ribosomes. Next big structure here in the plant cell is the central vacuole, which is a storage site for water and nutrients. Chloroplast, again, as I mentioned before. The cell wall. Cell wall is a uh, critical component of a plant cell. It's one of those diagnostic pieces of the cell that tells you that it's a plant cell. One interesting thing to note about the, the plant cell is that it contains holes as well. Now, the, the plant cell wall itself is not permeable like the membrane is, but it contains these little holes which allow for the transfer of substances through that impermeable cell wall. Those are called plasmodesmata. Okay, next structure that we're going to look at here, this is a cross-cut section of the cell, and you can see just underneath the cell wall is the cell membrane. Here we have a lysosome or a peroxisome. Uh, they're very similar structures. They are essentially uh, membrane-bound sacs called vesicles that are filled with enzymes. 
Next structure here is the mitochondrion, kidney bean shaped. Uh, it's got the internal inner foldings of the membrane called the cristae. We talked about those for increasing surface area. And then here's the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is that series of flattened membranes where proteins are packaged and modified. Uh, last structure I want to talk about briefly here is the microtubule organizing center found in plant cells. This is similar to what the centrioles are in animal cells involved in pulling apart the chromosomes during cell division. So that's the plant cell and the structures of the plant cell. Uh, cell B on this practice quiz was an animal cell. So as we label this, we want to first of all say that this is a eukaryote and it's an animal cell. All right. And we're going to work our way around the structures again, starting with the nucleus. And we can tell it's an, a eukaryotic cell because of the nucleus. And we can tell it's an animal cell because it lacks a cell wall, lacks a, a, a chloroplast, and lacks a large central vacuum. So nucleus with the outer covering of the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. It's got the nuclear pores, which allow for the passage of materials in and out. Through, the uh, through and into the nucleus. This picture, I think, is a little clearer that you can see the rough endoplasmic reticulum. If you look carefully here, you can see that there are dots on that meandering membrane, so rough ER. Next structure here I'm pointing to is the cell membrane, obviously the outer covering of the animal cell. Golgi apparatus, uh, flattened stack of membranes, kind of looks like a stack of pancakes, and it's got a whole bunch of these little bubbles that are forming on the edge of it. Those are called transport vesicles. If uh, in general term for a membrane bound sac inside the cell is a vesicle, if it's facing the cell membrane it can re be referred to as a secretory vesicle because it's being secreted from the cell. Uh, other vesicles could be transport vesicles, particularly if they're running from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. Okay, mitochondrion, again that very distinctive kidney bean shape with the inner folds increasing surface area. Cytoplasm is the fluid inside the cell. Now here, the next structure that is pointed out here is interesting. These are called microvilli. And if you recall, we talked about the increasing surface area. One of the ways that cells do that is they fold their membrane. Uh, this would be an example of like what we see in the, the small intestine. Uh, the inner lining of the small intestine has all these folds called microvilli that increase the surface area dramatically. Centrioles. Structures just outside the nucleus also that are involved in pulling apart the chromosomes during cell division. Here again, lysosome or peroxisome, they're really interchangeable. They are, they are structures, again, vesicles that are filled with digestive enzymes. Lysosomes are filled with a variety of digestive enzymes that are involved in breaking down either food particles or broken down old organelles that don't work anymore or even infecting particles. Peroxisomes generally are... Um, vesicles that contain enzymes that de help degrade peroxide and other toxins. Uh, and then we see here the cytoskeleton and microtubules, those little thin filaments. And then finally there is a flagellum here up at the top. Flagellum is used in locomotion. Not all animal cells have flagella, but uh, if they do, that would be used for propelling the cell through its environment. Okay, moving along to cell C. This is the Last cell to, to label, this is a prokaryote. We can tell it's a prokaryote because it lacks a defined nucleus. And one additional piece of information, we obviously we know it's some form of bacteria, whether it's an archae bacteria or a eubacteria, we're not sure on this one, but it's rod shaped. So this is what's referred to as a bacillus bacteria, right? Rod shaped or bacillus bacteria. Structures, the outer, these little fine hairs on the outside are called the pili, they're for adhering to surfaces. We have the outer, <clears throat> outermost covering which is called the capsule, and then just inside the capsule is a cell wall. Cell wall in uh, eubacteria is made out of a, a complex uh, carbohydrate protein molecule called peptidoglycans, very rigid, uh, has crosslinks that make it very, very strong. Uh, and then next structure we're, that we're looking at is the nucleoid region. That's where the DNA is stored in a single circular chromosome called a plasmid. Ribosomes, these are the, the structures that are involved in producing proteins. Free-floating in the uh, prokaryotic cells, there is no endoplasmic reticulum for them to be attached to. Here we see uh, flagella. 
Not all bacteria have flagella, but again, if, if it's present, that would be for locomotion. Cell membrane is inside the cell wall. It would be the, the, the barrier between the cell wall and the cytoplasm, which we're seeing here. Okay, so questions that we're looking at. Um, what cellular structure chemically modifies and packages cellular products? That's the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus will take in products from the endoplasmic reticulum and then package them into new membranes or modify them chemically and get them ready to be secreted out of the cell. This is the Golgi. Uh, structure or structures found in plant cells that help the cell to remain upright and grow. Cell wall and vacuole really are the two keys here. Um, if you look at a, a picture of a plant cell, the cell wall is rigid, it provides structure, um, so obviously it's, it's going to be a major support for the plant cell, but something that helps to keep the plant rigid is the vacuole. When the vacuole fills with water, it sort of exerts pressure against the cell wall. Um, imagine having a water balloon inside this cell, inside the confines of that cell wall. If you fill it entirely up with water, it's going to continue to expand and put pressure against that. So those are the two structures that are involved in keeping the plant upright. Uh, okay, the next question, the cellular structure that serves as a network system for the transport of cellular substances. That's the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, we see endoplasmic reticulum here uh, on our animal cell diagram. The rough ER is actually really clear here. So a, pr a protein might be made by a ribosome in the rough ER, and then it's going to travel through the endoplasmic reticulum along these membranes, uh, and it'll be put into some sort of transport vesicle where it can go to the Golgi apparatus and then be shipped out of the cell. Uh, outermost covering that regulates what enters and leaves the cell is the cell membrane. Its major job is to be a semi-permeable barrier between the inside and the outside of the cell. Dark dense region in the nucleus where ribosomes are synthesized is the nucleolus. A lot of times students confuse this with the nucleus. The nucleus is the large structure the nucleolus is the structure inside. If we have more than one of them, which is possible, and then we refer to them as nucleoli. Uh, okay, uh, genetic material in the nucleus that's made up of DNA and proteins. During the majority of the cell's life cycle, it's called chromatin, but when the cell is dividing, we refer to them as chromosomes. Okay, so either way. Cell A was a plant cell. Cell B, animal cell, those are both eukaryotic. Cell C is a prokaryote, it's bacteria, and because it's rod-shaped, we know it's bacillus. Three parts of cell theory. All living things are made of cells, that's number one. Number two, cells are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. And then the third part is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. And then our scientist, the scientist that's credited with discovering the nucleus is Robert Brown. The scientist that's credited with uh, naming that all animals are composed of cells was Theodor Schwann. Remember, Schwann is the German word for swan, and swans are animals. That's a way to remember that. Scientist that states that all cells come from pre-existing cells was Rudolf Virchow. He studied cells dividing as a part of his understanding of human disease. He was a pathologist. Uh, the cells that are primitive and lack uh, organelles, those are prokaryotic, and then cells that are found in members of the kingdoms Animalia and Plantae, those are eukaryotic cells. Okay. Now, there are a couple other scientists that we hadn't mentioned here. Robert Brown discovers and names the cell, right? He's using a microscope and names cells, cells. And uh, Louis Pasteur uh, disproves the idea of spontaneous generation. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, this was going over the practice quiz for the cell quiz coming up. So hopefully this is useful information for you. And uh, if you've got any questions, obviously let us know in class. And until next time, I'll see you in biology.